ton of variables in precision rifle to get the right result downrange and figuring out which of those variables is the weak link and improving it find the next weakest link improve that keep on working your way through that's the way you get to success so today what we're going to do is we're going to start off uh, probably do a few rounds at 100 i'm not going to do a true dispersion test for both your rifles for one we don't want to just pump a ton of rounds downrange and if we're shooting a minute and a half or two minutes, you know, it, it, that's gonna be a lot of extra rounds. We don't, really don't need to fire. Well, what we wanna do is learn about everything else in the process. And then later on, once we make some improvements, we'll come back in and we'll redo that process. So the first thing is obviously position. Uh, why we are shooting from a prone position, we want our body straight behind the rifle, not canted off to the side. We want, when we pull the trigger, that our body to absorb that recoil for the full length of our body. So what we want to do is go ahead and lay down behind your rifle. Both of you can go ahead and lay down. But I want that length of the rifle to travel down your spine. So we do have bolts open on both these rifles. They are safe, just FYI. <laughs> we went through that off camera. So, Clay, I can see that your body needs to come further this direction. So, scoot that way. Okay. Right there. Yeah, it looks good. Byron, we need to move your body quite a bit. So, I need you to shift your ass to the left. Or, I'm sorry, to the right. I'm my left. There you go. A little bit further. Okay, and then bring that. There you go. That's much better. So it might feel a little bit unnatural right away if you're not used to shooting like that. But as far as recovering your shot when you fire, you're gonna be able to see where that bullet goes on every shot. Yeah. And it, it'll actually become more comfortable for you the yeah. more you do it. And if it feels uncomfortable, it feels like you're craning the hell out of your neck. That bipod gets up a little bit higher yeah. and it'll remove some of that. The other thing that this does is it allows you to get a better, the next step here, which is a sight picture. If we have our body canted off the side, that means our head is also canted on the stock. So determining what is a level reticle is a lot more difficult when we're canted off to the side. Straight behind our gun, our eyes are level with planet Earth and it's a lot easier to get our equilibrium correct. Okay, so sight picture, position, covered. Now we got to talk about breathing. It's going to sound like a little bit stupid voodoo, but you guys know what respiratory pause is? Yes. Okay. We really want to try to break the shot in the respiratory pause if possible. This is not just sniper magic. It is actually, it's got some, it's got some credence too, right? We, we actually really want to have consistency from shot to shot. So in my shot process, I like to go a very audible and I can feel myself as a, like a mental breakdown, like, okay, this is where I need to be focusing on the last couple of ounces of my trigger pull. So I'll have pressure on my trigger, and then I'll finish that last at the bottom and at the middle of my respiratory pause before I take that next breath in. Now, obviously, if you're running like a bat out of hell and you need to send fucking rounds, you know, trying to have an audible exhale is not gonna happen, whatever, it's cool. If you're taking a hyper-precise shot, you got the time, do it. Uh, the last thing is, uh, so we got position, we got sight picture, we got breathing, and the last thing is that trigger pull. So yeah. go ahead and place your finger on the trigger and keep the bolts closed. Yep, see how you got that 90 degree bend now? Yeah. So what you're trying to actually do is imagine you're pushing, you're pushing the rifle into your shoulder using the trigger. That should be the only impulse or only muscles moving when you're, when you're actually firing. You're pushing the rifle into your shoulder using the trigger. If you think about that when you break the shot, you're gonna find a lot of consistency. That is your fundamentals of marksmanship. Really concentrate on the clean break of the trigger, body position, sight picture, all of that. But really, like a lot of times I teach fundamentals of marksmanship, I make it into five steps and make follow through the fifth because it is so important and it's so often overlooked. So any questions before we actually jump into shooting some shit? Nope. Let's do it. So 
this right here, this says WBC, stands for wind bearing capture. And what's really cool about this unit, if we click on that, we see a speed, wind speed, and a clock phase, okay? Now, if we look at the grass in front of us, if we just use that little bit of information, we can see that we have a left to right wind. So if I hit left and right, it's gonna change the direction that the clock is facing. So we want the wind coming from the left. I can see it is about a 930 wind, so I'm gonna dial it to 930, and it's probably only about two miles per hour. So now I got two miles per hour, 930. I'm gonna go ahead and click the wind bearing capture to leave that. So now if we aim at one of those targets, so pick any target 300 yards. Okay. All right, I got one right there. Okay, so I'm gonna actually go back to wind bearing capture and make sure that that arrow is still facing the direction of the wind. Okay. Um, so now that we're actually aiming at the target, we got, it's actually only about a nine o'clock wind, but that's okay because here's the thing. So we have nine o'clock right now. I want you to aim at that thousand yard target real quick. Can I change with it? Yep. How does it, how are you gauging, how is you it You see that? It? Is that at the target? So what it's actually doing is it's okay. saving the azimuth uh, that you used when you made the adjustment. So as you rotate the rifle using the compass internally, it's sure. also changing the azimuth of the wind. So that's automatically accounting for the correct corrected wind direction as we move the rifle around and range new targets. Whoa. So we got our 300 yard target there. We got the wind in. Stuff, but 300 yards. 300 yards. So we got 298, 1.2 mils is your correction. So just hold over 1.2. Okay, and you're shooting the the right circle? Yep. Okay, I'm on it. All right, dead center. Okay, so what we do is open our app back up. <laughs> All right. Okay, and right here, I want you to put in the truing range, which was the range that you just measured. Uh, was, oh shit, what was that again? Do you remember? Uh, it, it was, was 196 or 39. Go ahead and measure it again. Just make sure we're correct. Yeah. If we did 300, it'd probably be close enough. But I just want everything to be perfect. Yeah. We actually had a lot of consistency there. This last 298. That was it. 298. Okay. So we're going to put in truing range 298. So that goes where? Uh, under truing range. Oh, truing range. Yeah. So 2.98 or 298. 298. Yep. yep. Now under uh, the elevation, uh -huh. I want you to put in 1.1. 1. 1. 1. Okay, good. And so that's giving you a new velocity, which actually makes more sense. So we're gonna hit apply. So now it's applying that to your solver here. So a two or 2839 is your new velocity. And when you rearrange that target and back out, so we're going to do the same target again with a 1.1 hole. Okay, on you. 1.1. Center on the plate. Let's go to 400. 400. Byron hit something? <laughs> Fucking A, you did. <laughs> what? All right. And thinner. Impact. Let's go to 400 yards. Four minus two is two, plus one. So, 2.1. Impact. Impact. Okay, 198.17. On you. Perfect. Center of the chest. Good stance, pretty, pretty good stance. I've got a couple of minor changes. First of all, we always want to make sure we're very square to our target, so that's not just your shoulders, but your hips too. Your hips, okay. Yep. If you need to adjust your height, you do that by sliding your feet closer or further apart. Yeah. I, when you talk about bending the knees and the fatigue you get, I was like, oh, that makes sense. And then you, you know, you look like you're about to take it from behind, but yeah. But you actually you're giving it <laughs> from the front. <laughs> you're in it from the front, baby. Let's say that they say shooter doesn't have electronics. That's part of the stage, and you can only communicate with Byron and he's going to be spotting for you. And he's standing 30 yards away, and he's telling you what the range is. Yeah. You have to be able to shoot your target without pulling out an electronic. Yeah. Okay, 
hit again. Transition to 400 yards. Once you got it, now you gotta ask yourself. You're gonna shoot a pig, you're gonna be cocky and go for the plate. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna shoot a pig. <laughs> I'm going for that damn pig. The reason why I tend to do two legs back when I'm doing this is because when the rifle recoils, I want that recoil impulse to be consistent. So if I have my hand up here, here, you see a lot of people do this. This I think is, I even mentioned it, and I'm probably gonna piss off people when I say it. You see everybody do this. And I think it's because they saw a cool guy do it one time and they don't know why they're doing it. The truth of the matter is there is a great application for that. And that is absorbing recoil. So you're pulling this leg towards you and pushing the stock forward. And where that's handy is like an AR-10. If I got moving targets running around the field, if I wanted to stay on them, bump, 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 bump. It's amazing for doing that. The thing that's not good about it is if you're trying to take a very precise shot at distance. Yeah, I got a little, I got, I got probably, I probably got like four tenths yeah. movement when I'm hanging on here. Now, if I approach it the same way I approach shooting off of a barricade, straight behind my rifle, arm forward, hand over top of the scope, find my target. I'm probably bouncing around two, maybe three minutes. And hand on here? Yeah. Now you can do that. You can, you can grip the intersection of the tripod and the rifle. And we want to have our feet square the target too. There you go. You're shooting, buddy. I'm glad you guys are here. A real shooting partner. Friends. So, I can sit down on my foot. I can take this bag, slide it up. You have that magazine on you? Yeah. So, if I want to reach under and grab it the same way, just to support my hand, or have my hand supported by the magazine, and I actually have my arm touching my knee. I'm sitting on my leg. This is almost like cheating, but I can take it a step further, take my bag. And this is cheating. <laughs> and then this is cheating, right? So let's just talk about the baseball diamond method. If I was looking at this field, I would designate the 100 yard line, that berm. That looks like the pitcher's mound to me. Yeah. I'm staying at home plate. Okay, 300 yards is first base, straight down the center line. I would say that 700 yards is about uh, second base. Back is center field. Over here, I would say this is left field or uh, you know, third base. What you can do then when you walk up here, we can get a visual reference of, okay, this is approximately what we're gonna be working with. Clay will walk up here and you're gonna say, all right, baseball field. Uh, 100 yard or uh, this burn directly in front of us is the pitcher's mound. So that way when you guys actually get in the shooting positions and you start looking for targets, yeah. you find a target over here. All right, we got a target 340 yards at uh, first base. Okay, we have a target at center field at 1,010 yards. We have a target, you, know, you, can, you can use these visual references to quickly communicate to your partner roughly where something is in your field of fire. Or this is how we, this is how we stand. I mean, I've seen how they have the sniper partners. It's like the guy with the use your butt to one crack. Dude, looking over somebody's shoulder works. <laughs> it does. Who wants to go first? Whenever you're ready. You. Okay. Well, that is a wrap today here at the Vortex Range. Uh, Vortex Range, yeah, yeah. That was pretty much what it was. The Vortex Range. This is the last. We finished it up. We learned so much today. Uh, gosh, and the impact is cheating. That 4,000 is so <laughs> crazy. Uh, we learned how to put our wind into it and calibrated them. And we're gonna have probably a whole episode just on that. Because oh, yeah. there was enough there for a small episode at least. Um, but we went through a lot of training. We went through barricade training, uh, using our uh, wee bad bags. We- Alternate shooting positions. Alternate shooting positions, yeah. We used the tripod. Figured everything, figured everything out. We learned a lot more about our reticles. And we learned that the reticles are actually pretty handy and that our data is a lot easier than we thought it was going to be. Yeah. So hopefully we are going to probably do the snipers unknown shoot next month. Yep. Um, well, no, it would be the next month, November. November. His partner bailed, so I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, throw you in the bus like that, buddy. So I'm going to go <laughs> and do it with him, I think. Um, and Nick, what do you got to say? I'm just glad you guys came out. 
I hope uh, you're not blowing smoke up my ass and you actually learned no. something today. No, uh, <laughs> dude, we, we appreciate being able to come out here so much and dude, this range is incredible. And uh, we just, man, Wisconsin's a pretty great place, to be honest. It is absolutely I've, gorgeous. I've, I've always been not, not anti-Wisconsin, but like, eh, but now I'm like, wow. I want that house right there on top of that hill. That'd be all right. Yeah, it's a pretty good spot. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, that's it. Hope you guys liked the episode. It's more structured than the last ones. Big thanks to Nick and Vortex. Yeah. Yeah, big thanks to, to Nick and Vortex for the equipment and the training and letting us use their facility and just our hats off to you, my good sir. Cool. Yeah, it was. Appreciate you guys coming out. It was phenomenal. Thank you.